Good evening, gentlemen. <laughs> it was a pleasure gambling you out of your earnings. Don't blame me that you bet them all in a game where I was a player. You should have known better by now. If the wounds from your losses aren't aching too badly, come sit by the fireside with me and share a drink like men. No? Ah, fine. Since I like to think of myself as a fair man, I'll give you a chance to win everything back tomorrow night. Well now, hello there. Looks like we have a new face around the fire circle tonight. I haven't seen you before. Trust me, I never forget an attractive face. Would you like some company, handsome? Ah, don't be shy. Let me sit next to you. There's enough room on this bench for the two of us. You look lonely sitting by yourself. And most of the other benches are full anyway. Don't make me squeeze in next to Gran Gran over there. She's notorious for using her wiles against young, strapping men such as myself, and I wouldn't want to be the next victim of her charm. She nearly got me last night with her fresh-baked blueberry muffins, and I swear if she's made any of her famous strawberry tarts, I'll be forever in her devious clutches. How about saving my life here? Ha! Ah, you're an angel. Truthfully, this is my usual bench anyway, and uh, call me sentimental, it's my favorite vantage of the fire pit and the circle of torches. I can see all my friends this way. I never miss a night sitting around the fire if I can help it. With all the towns that we pass through, and all the customers we meet, there's always new stories to share at the end of each day. Let me tell you, there are eccentric people living in every corner of the world, and they always seem determined to come to our stalls and give us heaps of story material every day. Hmm, perhaps you are an eccentric yourself. Why else would you join our caravan? Are you thinking about becoming one of us? Or are you one of those curious runaways looking to sate some fascination with our lifestyle? Quiet one, aren't you? I guess you don't have to answer. It's smart of you either way. Traveling in caravans is so much safer. And becoming one of us means a life of travel, creativity, and freedom. Can't really go wrong. Though, I feel obligated to tell you. With a face as fine as yours, you really could make a great addition to any of our stores. Just a simple fact. The prettier the salesperson, the more likely customers are to buy. Hell, the more likely to get people to stop in the first place. How do you think I've amassed all of my current wealth? Huh. Gambling? Oh. Oh, you overheard that, did you? I'm hurt that the first words you speak to me are so harsh. Not quite so shy and quiet when there's something you want to call out about someone, hmm? Saucy. I like it. But no. I do make an honest living outside of the occasional game with my fellows. All I have to do is flash these pearly whites, cock an eyebrow, and let my dimples speak for themselves. The coins just fall out of the ladies' pockets. Some men's, too. It's all fair to me. It would be a sin not to utilize these good looks for the sake of survival when it's a proven strategy. What's this? Don't tell me you're curious. Well, why don't you have a guess at what I do? If you get it right, I'll give you a demonstration of how it's done. But if you get it wrong... Hmm, you have to tell me your name and where you're going. Come on, Angel. If you're running from something, it's not like I'll go turning you in. And if you're looking to join up and become a wayfarer, you'll have to tell us your name eventually. Even if it's an alias. Do you agree? Excellent. So, hit me. What do you think I do for a living? Damn, that's a piercing stare. I'm not looking to expose my soul, I hope. Oh, looking at my clothes. Okay. I don't know if they'll tell you anything, but have it your own way. I'll never deny anyone a chance to admire such a beacon of manliness. Oh, sure, sure, studying, not admiring. 
just keeping telling yourself that, Angel. As if those pink cheeks could fool a world-wise fellow like me. Take all the time to study that you need. <laughs> oh, please. Are you seriously guessing that I'm a fortune teller? What made you think that? It's not like I have a crystal ball hanging around my neck or anything. Not all of us who wear starry bandanas and gold hoops and bangles are fortune tellers. Some of us just have an impeccable sense of style. What I'm trying to say is that you're wrong. I'm a palm reader. Hey, I'd tell you to wipe that smile off your face if it wasn't so breathtaking. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not a close enough guess. We had a deal. You technically got it wrong, so you have to tell me about yourself, Angel. Hmm. You're more shrewd than I bargained for. Asking me to read it on your palms instead, if I can. You know that's the worst way to be after striking a deal, right? What's the point of a gamble if you just end up compromising? <laughs> Where's the fun in that? See, this is why I think you'd be great in the marketplace. You're very persuasive. And not just because of your handsome face. Besides, do you know how many would envy a free palm reading from such an attractive young man as me? I have a reputation to uphold, you know. I don't just go about caressing people's hands for free. <laughs> well, at least, unless they're a treat to the eyes, like you. Okay, fine, fine. Let me straddle the bench so I can face you. You'll have to slip out of those gloves. Here, may I? Thank you. These are very good quality leather, but not as soft as your hands. You must take very good care of your skin. Hmm. Okay, let me just rest your hands, palm up in mine. Relax. It's not like it's a test or anything. Uncurl your fingers, please, so I can see all the lines and shapes of your palms. It's a good thing they set up all these lantern poles in addition to the fire, but I wouldn't be able to see well enough. But even without sufficient light, I can tell that your hands are compassionate hands. They work for others more than yourself. If I trace this line here... Ah, 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 don't flinch. Sensitive, aren't you? Try to keep your hands relaxed and your fingers outstretched. I might stroke over different areas of your palms while I read them. This line indicates that you have a caring heart. And this one, see? It tells me that you are very productive. Hmm. You need your space after a certain amount of time with people, but you still spend most of your days helping others. And while you're sweet-natured, you aren't a pushover. You have an industriousness about you. It's difficult for you to keep your hands still for any length of time. You enjoy being busy. You also have an innate talent for what you do. I have it. Looking at all of this together, I can see it clearly. You really are an angel. Or the next best thing to one. You are a healer. You've probably been out from under your master's teaching for a few years, uh, long enough to gain confidence in your own abilities, but still new enough to be constantly searching for new information. You make your own salves and remedies to save on costs, and you even travel for the ingredients yourself. That's why you're here. You're going after some rare herb or other that's probably only found in a country other than your own. Clever move to travel yourself instead of paying the import fees. I'm impressed. Not all healers are their own apothecaries as well. That's where your natural talent must come in. You have an adeptness for healing in all forms, I'd say. <laughs> what? Why do you look so astonished? I'll bet you just thought I was another handsome-faced swindler with no real gift, didn't you? I'll forgive you for thinking so, as long as we can both agree on my good looks. I'll take your amused smile as an agreement. <sighs> well, looks like you're too important to up and join a traveling caravan. I'm sure there are plenty of people who need you all the time. With a skill like that, 
and a face that perfect. I'm sure your patients adore you. And hey, for the time you're with us, maybe you can make a bit on the side. If you'd like to set up a little healer store with us during the day. Or you could sell medicine, if you're carrying any. <laughs> My goodness, I didn't see that bag on the other side of the bench. It's huge. <laughs> what all are you carrying with you? A bit of everything? Just on the off chance someone gets hurt and needs you? I told you, palms never lie. You're compassionate and care about helping others. While I admire those qualities, I'm telling you, you could make at least traveling expenses if you joined us in the marketplace every day. We could borrow a tent for your stall, and you could set up right next to mine. Need to sleep on it? Eh, fair enough. But where were you even planning to sleep tonight? Doesn't seem like you thought this through very well, Angel. In fact, it appears that this entire trip of yours was fairly rushed. There was some urgency, wasn't there? Maybe a patient who needs whatever remedy you're traveling for? They must need it very badly, to make you rush out without even planning your next steps. Seems selfless and foolish at the same time. No wonder you were this far out on the road at this time of night. Good call, though. Wandering into our campfire circle? Hey, we always welcome visitors. I'd offer you a drink, but... I feel like you're the type who wants to keep their head clear when they can help it. No, no, I didn't get that from your palms. I can just make a few logical guesses. Healer, apothecary, responsible, non-drinker, it all fits together. I was about to pour myself a drink from one of the ale barrels, but... I think finding you accommodations is my top priority now. We can't have you sleeping outside on the grass. What kind of monsters would people take us for if we did that? No. How about you stay with me? I have my own cart thanks to the profit margin these dimples and this blessed jawline have given me. There's plenty of space for two. And let me tell you, many people would love to be offered a night's sleep with me. <laughs> All right, I'm joking, I'm joking. No need to go reaching for your sharpest apothecary instrument. I am nothing more than a hopeless flirt. <laughs> Truly, though, I promise your virtue will remain intact. If you can resist this face for the span of this entire conversation, I have no doubt you'll resist any temptation, even sleeping a few feet apart. Listen, I even have a makeshift curtain I can hang down the middle of the cart's roof. So you'd have your own space without even having to see me. Though I don't know why you wouldn't want to. I can understand giving you your privacy. It's the least I can do for such a handsome face. And also, I honestly do think that you'd be a useful addition to the caravan. For however long you need to travel with us. Accidents occasionally happen. Or people can fall ill. And having a healer on hand would be a great asset. We wouldn't ask you to offer your services for free either. If we can't pay in coin, we can at least barter with food or supplies. The way I see it, you're looking at a good deal here, Angel. What do you say? Ah, wonderful! It's going to be so exciting, having an attractive healer around. <laughs> Maybe you could show me how to make a few remedies while you're at it. All right, I won't push my luck. You look tired, you know. How far did you walk today? What? Tell me you at least hitched a ride along the way. No? God, how are you not falling over? Come on. That blue cart right on the end there is mine. I can carry your bag if you'd like. Please, I insist. If you've been carrying it all day that far, you have to be dying to let someone else take it for a bit. Take my hand. Let's put you to bed. Tomorrow, you'll become an honorary wayfarer. Ha <laughs> ha.